What's up everyone, Lethal Concept here, so if you followed me for a while you know I did the Back to Basics series which focused on the 6 basic classes to provide stable builds for you guys to enter into golds if you were just playing out. So now with patch 1.06 or patch 1.07 which is the most recent patch but patch 1.06 was the one that had the most impactful changes. With those patches, some of the builds have been changed a bit, so I'm just going to go quickly go through all the different changes in the builds, and the more in-depth descriptions will be down in the, uh, or the in-depth text guides will be down in the description below. So first off with the Human Soldier, nothing much actually changed for the Human Soldier, except for now with Enhanced Munitions, I actually pick up that for the extra damage on your combat powers, which are Concussive Shot and Frag Grenade. I will say, however, uh, Raptor is still obviously the best uh, weapon that I've had with, and the most success I've had with the Human Soldier, the Terminator, the Monster Terminator build. I now mainly run Yusha in my secondary slot instead of mostly Scorpions. If you look through the builds for my Back to Basic classes, I usually had the Scorpion as my secondary. It's now changed to Yusha. As you can see, it's eight or seven or whatever. It's pretty high, and you can see most of my recharge times are not affected. Now I will say however, that the ammo with Raptor on this build is about like 21 or 19. So the only change you may want to make is actually go for Dump Heat instead of Supercharge. Other than that, nothing really changed about my Human Soldier from patch 1.06. Raptor still has the same damage, same fire rate and same everything. With the Vanguard, there actually are some small changes and that is, as you can see, I've equipped a Dante to try out the different shotguns. In the end, I would actually recommend three shotguns for you to use. The Scattershot, which is what I have equipped, and also, I would actually also recommend either the Disciple or the uh, Hesh shotgun. These two weapons have, this one has a ammo of 6 and this one has an ammo of 10. Now, you want shotguns that actually have a decent amount of clip size so that you can at least kill two or three enemies and the reason you want that is because you'll actually find that if you charge an enemy and you have no ammo in your weapon the game forces you or tries to make you tries to make you reload now this can be detrimental if you say want to melee and you're low on and you say you charge and you get damaged a lot for whatever reason and you really want to melee that instant you may find that you're re reloading and you may need a couple more button presses to actually melee. Now this, it, and someone else has documented this change in a reddit post which I'll leave link in the description below if I can find it. But yeah, that's basically it. Um, nothing much for the changes on this back to basic build. I will say however, you may want to ru run weapon training with the new weapons. That is possible, but I still choose power augmentation just because I, I don't see any reason to change it. Anyways, for the next class, uh, the Human Engineer, now there is a couple of changes for the Human Engineer, and that is, am I still running that, but yes, um, I actually found that I really enjoyed Overload with Assault Turret on the Link. I really found that it was very nice, because with the new changes to the Assault Turret, you have 200% recharge speed, and this recharge speed starts as soon as you deploy the Assault Turret, it doesn't start when your Assault Turret gets destroyed. So with the recharge speed you've got like 10 seconds, 10, and it just it's incredibly nice with the extra 30%, 35% recharge speed. And the heal is okay as well, so to keep it alive. Now I will say that with my rank 6 cryo bullet, I found that it actually doesn't work. It doesn't work sometimes when you're off host, so I'll actually pick up flamethrower instead. That's what I would recommend, just all B on assault turret. And you stick around with it. And I would go with EMP and anti-shields and recharge speed. Now the playstyle is kind of the same, the uh, stun everything, get free headshots. And there are two weapons, well three I guess, that I would recommend. The first one is the Disciple if you're playing a more, if it's a closer map like a say Firebase Zero where you can get in close a lot of times. Disciple is amazing. The other weapon that I would recommend is the Yusha, it's, it's a very staple, very incredibly strong pistol. Uh, if you're going for the Yusha pistol barrel and magazine to increase that capacity to 3, if I yeah, if I show you guys, it will increase to 3. The other weapon is, it's this, it's still the, the sniper rifle that I used last time, which is the Vanquisher. 
Vanquisher for the free headshots is incredibly nice. The reason you'd use the Yusha over this Vanquisher is that the Yusha doesn't zoom in as much, so you can actually get a lot of area peripheral vision. You can actually see a lot more when you're zooming in, and it's better for close range as well. Um, with the equipment, I just had engineering because I was testing out a full uh, power damage or tech damage. With this one, though, um, I will say that for equipments on classes that don't have a lot of innate shield regeneration or any damage resistance like the engineer, I would 100% pick up an equipment if there was one that gave at least 20% to shield. So that's that's basically what's changed for that character. For the human male adept, now I actually was trying a full damage build with a shockwave with full damage instead of recharge, singularity with detonation, and obviously, whoops, and obviously adaptive war amp for as much damage as possible. I found that the damage was lacking, so for singularity into shockwave, I had to detonate singularity to kill any unshielded standard size mooks like raiders or ad eyes which made me a bit disappointed. So if I was to have this build on gold, I would actually change it so that it still have radius and recharge and exploding singularity, but I would change shockwave to have radius and I'll and that's pretty much it. And I wouldn't use it I wouldn't use like singularity and shockwave and detonate singularity just for the unshielded mooks. I just keep singularity there to be able to still lift up mooks. Now for the weapon, I would actually, uh, Disciple was actually pretty nice, there is no, unfortunately no shield, the only one is Juggernaut shield which is 10%, as I said again, if there was 20 I would 100% use that. There is a couple of weapons that you could use, the one that I used for my back to basics was a hurricane with disrupt the ammo to prime things as fast as possible, so you can still use a hurricane. If you don't, if you don't want to use a hurricane, I would actually recommend either the equalizer or the actual particle assault weapon. Now, particle assault weapon is the fastest priming weapon there is, and this will make. And you want a priming weapon, something that can prime really fast with disruptor ammo, because you this gives you another like avenue of offense. And what I mean is that your standard combo is obviously singularity into detonated shockwave. However, if you have just used Singularity and your Shockwave has come off cooldown because as you can see it's a short, way shorter cooldown than Singularity, what you can actually do is use a weapon to stun them and then detonate with Shockwave and create a tech field which also stuns other enemies that walk through it. And Particle Assault Weapon is actually pretty good with Disruptor Ammo in taking down shields and shielded enemies. And this means that once you stun them, you start taking down their shields, they go down to their red health, you can start CCing them with pull instead of using your main combo, Singularity and Shockwave, and this means that you can save Singularity and Shockwave against bigger mobs and against shielded enemies that like come in one or twos, you can use paw or a weapon with disruptor ammo, take down their shields down to the red health so they can be CC'd and use pull on them. That's basically what's changed with, or what's the uh, build that I would use on the human adept. As for the sentinel, the big changes here, I actually moved an entire tree. So with my back to basic build, I actually had throw max. I actually run max with weapon training and tech armor now. Now the reason I ran oh sorry, the reason I run max weapon training with weapon specialists is because with barricade weapon feedback, this makes it so that your Yushia has a lot of damage. It's incredibly powerful with the weapon damage, and this allows you to just pretty much snipe stuff from across the map, medium range, close range, and you still got the utility of having throw with energy drain, both on short cooldowns of 9 and 8 seconds to combo into tech fields and tech explosions, and also use barricade for stun. It's an incredibly strong, stronger version than it was back to basics because the Yusha got incredibly buffed, and power damage got buffed as well. And that's the main changes for my back to basics human central build. For my other one, uh, the other last one, for my infiltrator, nothing much has changed here. I actually uh, played around, as you, uh, actually, yeah, as you can see, I ran incinerate. I actually wanted to test out incinerate because it had its damage boosted and obviously extra damage versus armor. So I was trying that. I actually still prefer the sticker grenade. I actually much prefer the sticker grenade. So if I was going to run this back in gold, I would 
respec into stick grenades, radius, grenade capacity, and anti-shields. Now, this is a debate of personal preference. I would go anti-shields, just, it's just personal preference, really. No right or wrong there. And I'd still run my 3 max tactical cloak, munitions, training, and combat fitness. For weapons, you can, there are two kind of ways you can play this character. You can run it with a shotgun going close with tactical cloak, and if you're going to do that, you'd obviously run Shock Trooper for the extra power cell. If not, then you can run a Sniper variant, which is what I was trying, as you can see. Shadow X and Valiant X. I still found that I much prefer the Vanquisher out of all of them. I still prefer the Vanquisher. For my secondary, obviously, I run with the Yushia. But I was testing out different Sniper rifles, and I still found that I still enjoyed the feel of... The Vanquisher, it has four, four, five shots, that's right, five shots, and it's still like an extra bullet over the Black Widow, and it's still decently strong with decent reload, even though its damage got nerfed, so I still found that the Vanquisher is the de facto weapon for it. Now, for pistols, you can actually run the Yusha or the Scorpion, and the reason why you run the Yusha is because it will be able to make up for your lack of range. However, if you want to shoot around cover, I'd actually go with the Scorpion. Now, for the equipment, I still run with Juggernaut Shields, just for the 10% shields. I don't really need the extra 10% damage on pistol or sniper rifles. I'd much rather prefer the shields. I'm still waiting for that 20% shields upgrade for the equipment. Those are the pretty much the uh, changes here. And I made this quick video just to discuss the changes that I would make to the builds if I had to make the builds for patch 1.07. Instead of making, you know, six different videos detailing pretty much the exact same build with a couple of minute changes, I instead decided to do it all in one video. That's really it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope to see you next time. That's it. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.